Number 10. A C-130 Hercules Aircraft The C-130 Hercules is an American-made four-engine military transport aircraft that was designed by Lockheed Martin in the 1950s. It entered service with the U.S. in 1956, and amazingly, it's still in production today. In 2007, the C-130 became the fifth plane to mark 50 years of continuous service with the U.S. Air Force, the aircraft's original primary customer. The Hercules has now been produced for over 60 years, and while you can typically see this aircraft in the sky, you can also find it underwater. In November of 2016, one of these C-130s was sunk on purpose as an artificial wreck off the coast of Aqaba, Jordan. But why would they sink a 100-foot aircraft? Well, the short answer is tourism. The whole project was spearheaded by the King of Jordan, Abdullah II bin Al Hussein, and he believed that by sinking the C-130, scuba divers and other tourists would be attracted to the area. The plane was sunk in an easily accessible location close to the nearby Cedar Pride wreck and was just a few meters from the submerged anti-aircraft vehicle called the M42 Duster, sometimes referred to as the tank. With a flat bottom and an average max depth of about 53 feet, the Hercules sits upright and is almost completely level. Its wingspan stretches roughly 130 feet, and because of the Red Sea's excellent visibility, it can almost always be seen from the surface of the water. It's not the first plane to be sunk in an effort to increase tourism, but it did exactly what it was meant to do. And while many diving destinations require tons of experience, the underwater sites in the Gulf of Aqaba, specifically the sunken C-130, are excursions the whole family can enjoy. Number 9. Scuba Spiders Did you know that there are some arachnids that can breathe underwater? If you didn't know that, you aren't alone, but it's true. There are spiders that can survive underwater by using an air bubble as a sort of oxygen tank. And scientists have recently figured out some fascinating details about this arachnid diving bell, including the fact that the air bubble can provide spiders with more than a day's supply of air. Scientists have known about these miraculous tiny creatures for a while, but it took them some time to figure out how they create such a durable air bubble. It also wasn't initially clear how long the spiders could stay underwater before having to resurface to replenish their bubbles with fresh air. According to researchers Roger Seymour from the University of Adelaide and Stefan Hetz from Humboldt University, they conducted a study on the diving bell spiders by placing them into tanks of water that mimicked the conditions of a stagnant pond on a warm summer's day. They did this to see how the animals fared in low oxygen conditions. Immediately, most of their test subjects constructed webs between aquarium sides and pond weeds. Then, each of the spiders went to the surface of the water to collect a sizable air bubble that they held between their hydrophobic, water-repelling hairs on their rear legs and abdomen. The arachnids then placed webbing around the lower sides of their bubbles, which they then entered from the bottom. Some of the chambers they created were just big enough for their abdomens to fit inside, while others had larger bubbles that enclosed the spider's whole body. Tiny sensors in the tanks measured oxygen levels inside the air bubbles and in the surrounding water, revealing that the spiders extracted oxygen right from the water, similar to how gills work. The sensors also proved that the arachnids could survive at low oxygen levels. And while the bubble stays intact for a long period of time, over 24 hours, it does eventually start to shrink, forcing the spiders back up to the surface to make a fresh one. Number 8. Underwater Sculpture Park While it isn't a naturally occurring phenomenon, the underwater sculpture park off the west coast of Grenada is one of the most incredible sights a diver can visit. It was installed in 2006 and was created by the famous sculptor Jason Decares Taylor. The sculptures are mostly made of simple substrates like rebar and concrete, and they were designed to allow marine life to develop on them. They're also located sympathetically to enhance the reef, making natural use of its sun-dappled sandy patches and its varied topography of rocky channels. The sculptures are proving to be a highly successful artificial reef and are attracting a stunning variety of marine life. And in the process of doing so, they've attracted divers and tourists as well. Included among these sculptures are vicissitudes, a circle of child-sized figures linking by holding hands, the lost correspondent, an eerie statue of a man working at his desk with a typewriter, and Christ of the Deep, 
a replica of Jesus with his arms stretched up towards the sky. And while these sculptures are incredible, there are many other amazing things to see at the Grenada Underwater Sculpture Park, which is situated just 10 to 16 feet beneath the surface. In total, there are 75 statues at the park that lure in hundreds of divers every year. And even if you don't snorkel or dive, you can still get a great view of the underwater sculptures by taking a glass bottom boat tour. Number seven, Lake Michigan's Stonehenge. Apparently, scientists have discovered a rock formation in Lake Michigan that looks like a mini Stonehenge. It was first found back in 2007 when a team of archaeologists from the Northwestern University of Michigan was on a mission searching for the remains of sunken ships. They were looking for lost vessels when they noticed the stone structure sitting at a depth of 40 feet in the lake. Professor of Underwater Archaeology Mark Hawley and his colleague Brian Abbott were the first to observe this peculiar phenomenon. The research team believes that this submerged building, similar to England's Stonehenge, is roughly 9,000 years old. However, on one of the stones, there's a carving that seems to resemble that of a mastodon, which went extinct more than 10,000 years ago. This was an amazing discovery, but the exact coordinates of the underwater formation are being kept secret. This was a condition put in place by local Indian tribes in the area who don't want the influx of curious tourists on their land. So what do you think they found at the bottom of Lake Michigan? Let us know in the comments, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 6. Cone-Shaped Structure Roughly 30 feet beneath the Sea of Galilee in Israel, there's a mysterious circular-shaped structure that has a diameter that's bigger than the length of a Boeing 747 aircraft, which is approximately 232 feet. Scientists made this shocking discovery by complete accident back in 2003 when they used sonar to map the bottom of the lake. According to a geophysicist who worked on the project from Tel Aviv University named Shmuel Marco, they just bumped into it. He explained to CNN that the bottom of lakes are typically smooth, so they were surprised to find a sizable mound. Marco said they didn't realize the importance of what they'd found right away, but after consulting with some experienced archaeologists, they were advised that they may have just discovered a giant Bronze Age statue. They came to the conclusion that the structure was made of basalt rocks that were arranged in the shape of a cone. At the base of the structure, it measured 230 feet, and it's 32 feet tall and weighs about 60,000 tons. Amazingly, it's twice the size of Stonehenge. Marco believes that due to its location and size, the structure could have been created underwater as a sort of fish nursery. However, there are archaeologists that think it's more likely that it was constructed on dry land and later submerged in the lake. The exact age of the circular formation has been difficult for researchers to pinpoint, but they've estimated that it could be anywhere between 2,000 and 12,000 years old. Number 5. Lake of Skeletons A remote lake located up high in the Indian Himalayas was found to be littered with hundreds of human skeletons. Situated 16,500 feet above sea level is Rupkund Lake, which sits at the bottom of an elevated slope on Trisil, one of the highest mountains in the country. The bizarre collection of bones was first discovered back in 1942 by a patrolling British forest ranger. And ever since then, this place has come to be known as the Lake of Skeletons. Depending on the weather and season, the body of water which remains frozen for the majority of the year shrinks and expands. However, when the snow melts, the bones are visible, sometimes with flesh still attached and well-preserved. The skeletons aren't just found around the lake, though. They're inside it, as if this was an ancient burial ground of some sort. To date, the remains of an estimated 600 to 800 people have been uncovered here. But who are these people? Where did they come from? And how did they die? The most simple answer is, nobody knows. While researchers have speculated for decades, no one knows for certain what exactly happened here. 38 bodies from the site were carbon dated and genetically analyzed, and some of them dated to around 1,200 years ago. However, some of these individuals' deaths were separated by as much as 1,000 years, only adding more confusion to the mystery. A pilgrimage that passes close to the lake could explain why so many people were traveling in the area, but it doesn't clarify why so many skeletons have turned up here. Until more evidence is revealed, which is difficult due to the extreme conditions around the lake, 
the mystery remains unsolved. Number 4. Nuestra Señora An astounding amount of treasure was discovered in the 17th century Spanish galleon shipwreck of the Nuestra Señora de las Maravillas, otherwise known as Our Lady of Wonders. The vessel was found in the Caribbean, near the Bahamas by a team of researchers from Allen Exploration, led by the company's founder, philanthropist, explorer and entrepreneur, Carl Allen. The wreck and its treasures were found by Carl's team along an eight-mile stretch across the ocean floor. The vessel, according to Carl, had already been heavily salvaged by English, Spanish, Dutch, French, American and Bahamian expeditions that took place in the 17th and 18th centuries. But the team still managed to recover some incredible artifacts, including solid silver bars, an almost six-foot-long gold chain, an emerald pendant, incredibly preserved pottery, and a silver sword hilt that once belonged to a soldier named Don Martin de Aranda y Guzman. Number 3. City of Heraklion In the year 2000, the lost city of Heraklion, which at one point was the largest port in Egypt, was uncovered underwater after more than 2,000 years. The origins of the city date back to the 12th century BC, and it's largely linked to ancient Greece. The metropolis flourished in the days of the pharaohs, but over time it was weakened and destroyed by a combination of tsunamis, earthquakes and rising sea levels. By the end of the 2nd century BC, Heraklion's monumental buildings collapsed into the water, likely after a severe flood. Some of the city's inhabitants chose to stay in what remained of the metropolis during the Roman era, but by the end of the 8th century AD, the rest of Heraklion became fully submerged within the Mediterranean. Since its discovery, many of the city's precious treasures have been brought to the surface, including several massive humanoid statues, allowing researchers to get a glimpse into the ancient Egyptian and Greek world. Heraklion, otherwise known by its Egyptian name Thonis, or sometimes called Thonis Heraklion, was a port city situated just 20 miles northeast of Alexandria. Its remains are now located about one and a half miles from the coast of Abu Kir Bay, where it sits in just 30 feet of water. At one time, the city was intersected by canals and had a number of separate anchorages and harbors, and its fantastic temples, wharves and tower houses were all linked by bridges, pontoons and ferries. At the peak of the city's power, it was the country's main port for the collection of taxes and international trade. Number 2. Underwater Soundscapes Most everyone is familiar with the melodious chirps of dolphins or the songs of whales, but recently scientists discovered much more music that's made by underwater life. Just like in the movie Finding Nemo, fish can talk, although much of what they say is silent to a human underwater. But besides that of fish, there are sounds that have been picked up by marine researchers that they aren't able to identify the source of. There is apparently a sound emanating from the seagrass meadows in the Mediterranean Sea. It's similar to the croak of a frog and it's coming from within the dense foliage, but nowhere else in the ocean can the sound be heard. The beautiful songs of whales may be familiar music to the Earth's underwater habitats, but very few people could identify the rhythmical drumbeat of a red piranha or the hoarse growl of a streaked gurnard. This is why scientists are now calling for these sounds and many more to become widely accessible to the public. Experts from all over the globe are now working to create what they've dubbed the Global Library of Underwater Biological Sounds or GLUBS for short. By creating a global database of the whistles, booms and chatter of the sea, Researchers will be able to open them up to AI-based learning which will help to identify the source of some of the sounds that have yet to be established. Having an organized collection of underwater sounds can help to discern information about certain species types, their behavior and their overall biological diversity. A team of 17 experts from 9 different countries is currently working on creating GLUBs, so who knows what new sounds they might discover in the near future. And at number 1, Pollo Negro in a submerged Mexican cave, the fossilized bones of wolf-like carnivores, short-faced bears and saber-toothed cats have been removed in the Yucatan Peninsula. The cave has since been called Hoyo Negro, which is Spanish for black hole, and it's a deep 200-foot pit. At one time, the cave likely lured unsuspecting ancient humans and animals alike and trapping them in a dark subterranean system. And eventually, Hoyo Negro flooded 
preserving many of the animals that were trapped inside. Lead researcher Blaine Schubert from East Tennessee State University reported to Biology Letters that the bones that they found in the cave dated between 38,400 to 12,850 years ago, a period during the last ice age and into the late Pleistocene epoch. Unlike most bones from this time in the past, they were protected from the extreme tropical climate by the cave's low oxygen floodwaters, leaving them remarkably preserved. This discovery proved to scientists that plants and animals were crossing over to South America from the north and vice versa about 2.5 to 3 million years ago. According to Schubert, before finding the fossilized bones in the cave, there was no record of these animals crossing back over a land bridge from South to North America. Which of these strange underwater discoveries did you find the most fascinating? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.